It's hard to believe that um, we are once again celebrating the anniversary of the consecration of uh, Bishop Amundo, and hence the formation of your diocese. Uh, and I'm so thankful that uh, Bishop uh, asked me to uh, address you and bring a word from the Lord for you uh, on this event, and, uh, which is indeed a celebration, uh, a celebration uh, not only of Bishop Ramundo and, and, uh, and Gwen, the First Lady of your diocese, but also a celebration of the entire church, uh, of his ministry and his leadership, of uh, his being a man of God, a faithful and uh, caring husband and a good father, and uh, knowing that we can look to him and see the image of Jesus in his love uh, for everyone who's under uh, his authority. Uh, the greatest quality that the bishop has is that he, he loves God and he loves his people. We're also celebrating the consecration of Bishop Jean Lilly. Um, I recently chatted with him and he is doing well. Uh, his ministry in the Philippines will, will go on for a generation. And uh, I know uh, Bishop Ramundo can report, he was just in Davao, uh, that the church there is doing well and, and prospering. And we also remember the Episcopacy of Archbishop Ricardo Alcaraz. Uh, Bishop Ramundo, Bishop uh, Alcaraz, and um, Ricardo, Bishop Ricardo, and Bishop Jean were all consecrated on the same day in Manila. It was a historic event in uh, the life of the church. And um, I have pictures of it and uh, of, of the event. Everybody looks so young. Um, but we miss Bishop Ricardo uh, deeply. And I know Bishop Ramundo misses, misses him in a special way. Uh, they were not only brother bishops, uh, they were dear friends uh, to each other. And early on in their walk with the Lord, um, they walked together. But let me share from the scripture we just read, the gospel reading for this morning, which is from John chapter 6. Powerful gospel. Uh, reading, a powerful chapter, rather, in, in, in the Gospel of John. Um, it ends it with, And we have believed and have come to know that you, Jesus, are the Holy One of God. The entire Gospel of John is about believing in Jesus. Uh, more importantly, about believing who he is. You know, the question that's asked in uh, Caesarea Philippi to Peter and, and the disciples, who do men say that I am? Who am I? Um, the question that's asked in another way, in a reverse way, by Paul on the road to Damascus, says, um, who are you, Lord? Who is Jesus? And that's the essential, the, the primary uh, uh, question of, of the Bible. Who is Jesus? And, that's, and the, what I could say the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is about that, that question. But John writes in a particular way and says it's, it's in believing that Jesus is the Son of God and believing in him and believing in Jesus, uh, we may have eternal life. The very end of the gospel, he writes, I've written all of this so that you may believe. That you may believe, like Thomas, you may believe uh, only believe without actually seeing him in the flesh. You have, if you're here this morning, you have eternal life with God, life with God forever and ever without end, because you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And if you're here this morning and you've not made a decision about believing in Jesus as the Son of God, Listen, listen to the Eucharist, the prayers of the Eucharist. Listen to the people around you. Uh, and even if you have questions, go to the bishop, uh, who is a man of God, or go to one of the clergy, or, or the person who brought you here, or someone you know who's part of uh, your church, and talk to them. Ask them, who is Jesus? Because coming to believe in him, you will have eternal life. See, you don't get eternal life by what you do or what you accomplish, nor do you get eternal damnation or, re or uh, one would say eternity in hell by what you do or what you didn't accomplish. 
scriptures are very clear and John is very clear and Jesus is very clear in what he said this morning. We have eternal life because of who Jesus is and what Jesus accomplished on the cross. See, we don't do anything to get forgiveness. You receive forgiveness. You, you confess your sins and then you receive from him a forgiveness, by the way, that's already there. A forgiveness that exists because of the cross. You receive that which, is, which has happened. And the same way you receive the love of God. You just receive it. There's nothing you can do to earn God's love. And there's nothing you can do to make God not love you. God loves you and God has forgiven you. Now what we do is we receive that. We receive the love. We receive the forgiveness because we're made. We're made. We're created by God to live in that love and anything that separates us from that love, which we we call sin. Anything that we've done or do that blocks that love. All we have to do is say, forgive me. And immediately we're released into the love of God. And because you're made to be loved by God, you're made to love other people. You're made to be loved by other people. We all desire it and, and, and very who we are from the moment we're born. A baby wants to cuddle with his mother or when it can see, he'll look into her eyes and look into the eyes of his father, responding to the love that the parents have for him or her and and gives it back, makes eye contacts and giggles and smiles because we're made to love. We're made to love and and the little ones who are so quick, the little ones just learning to walk, to run up and grab us and say, I love you. That's because we're made that way. And unfortunately, the, the sins of the world and the brokenness and the hurt and all the stuff that can damage us impact that that innocence that God wants for us, like the child to get, get love and to give love. And so we're made that we can, we can, we have the ability to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. Why? Because God loves us with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind and all his strength. He loves us fully, completely, nothing held back, nothing held back from the hand of God for us. And so that love, when it's poured into us, when we receive it, gives us the ability to keep the commandments of God because we're made to keep them. It's not impossible to love God. It's not impossible to love our neighbor and it's not impossible to love one another. I used to think it was that when you said you can forgive even your enemies, I thought that's not possible, but it is. It is possible. And in that forgiveness, in that love, there's freedom. See, we just receive his forgiveness and then we forgive in the way that we've been forgiven and leave the rest to God. And when we do that, we open ourselves to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which fills us again with his love to overflowing. And we learn what it is to be live in a life of mercy and not judgment. To believe that Jesus is the son of God is, is not to understand something intellectually. In fact, this, this whole conversation that Jesus is having about uh, uh, the bread and the wine is something we cannot understand intellectually. What we do is we believe that he's the son of God and that he has said that this is my body and this is my blood, that unless you eat of the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Because we believe who he is, we believe his word to us. And as we believe who he is in our heart every day, one day at a time, we just believe. Even if we doubt, we turn the doubt over to him. We turn the lack of faith over to him. We turn whatever going on over to him and just say today for the next 24 hours, I'm going to believe he is the son of God. And that if I eat of his body and drink of his blood, I'll have eternal life. And as you believe that and you do that one day at a time, it gets into the very core of who we are who I am. 
How this happened is not understood with our brain. It's not, you can't take a course in high school or college or, or at, at, at a, even at a Christian school to learn that, you have to walk that. You have to let that happen in your heart, in the very center of who you are, and we grow in that. Then we know what it means when we begin to believe and to walk by faith. See, that's true of the Eucharist. We cannot explain how the bread and the wine are the body and blood of Jesus. But the more we partake of communion and receive the bread and the wine, the more we know for certain. And we're convinced that it truly is the body and blood of Jesus. That that's been the experience of the church around the world for 2,000 years since the day in the upper room at the Last Supper when Jesus took bread and wine and said, this is my body and this is my blood. That the church has known him in what in scripture we call the breaking of the bread. And in communion, we discover that we can abide in him. In other words, we can stay with him, we can be with him. And, and knowing that in that moment, we have eternal life. You and I really have no place to go once we've decided to believe in Jesus, to believe he's the Son of God, once we've met him and we know who he is, that he's God and that he's with us, there's no place to go. There's no, well, turning back or turning away. Oh, it might be a rough walk or a challenging walk. It's not always a straight walk. It's got curves in it. It's got bumps and hills and valleys and pits and there's struggles and times of trial and tribulation, but there's also a joy that's set before us. The Bible says Jesus suffered, but for the joy that was set before him, the joy of eternal life with him, because we know who he is. We bring the relationship we have with Jesus, that relationship, especially in the Eucharist, we, we, we bring that relationship, that's what we have to others. That's what we have to share. It's not theology, it's not Bible verses, it's, it's, it's who Jesus is to us. That's real. I can tell you about the Jesus I know and my walk with him for over four decades. And we bring that and tell those who are not part of us. It's difficult to understand, it's hard to understand, but it's the truth. And we let them know not only in words, but in actions. We act in the incredible love of God and show them God's love and forgiveness. How in Jesus we find truth and eternal life. I've spent many years, many years studying theology. I've spent many hours uh, listening to sermons, teachings, reading books about God. Before I even sat down to tape this, <laughs> Uh, today, I was reading papers by the Theo Theology uh, Commission of the uh, International Communion. But it comes down to the reality that every day, every day, it's knowing Him. And knowing Him first and foremost in prayer. When we pray, we come to say, I know Him. I'm talking to somebody. I'm not talking to myself. Prayer is evidence that God exists. Prayer is evidence that God loves you. Second, I know him, believe it or not, when I see him in the bishops and the priests and the deacons laying down their lives for us, living a life that's sacrificial so that we can know Jesus. Men like Bishop Ramundo and Bishop Ariel and Bishop Paul and Bishop Elmer and Bishop Jean along with the clergy and the deacons, but also in many other of the elders of the church, men and women, who show us the love of God and we see Jesus. Every day I see and know Jesus in the poor and in the suffering. He comes to us in the children so often. What a blessing to see the children in church, and especially when they're worshiping God. I see, I see him and I know him. Whenever there is love and forgiveness, I see him. And every week, every week, 
when the priest lifts up the bread and the wine and says, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. I see him. And I can say along with St. Thomas in the upper room, my Lord and my God. And then I receive communion. I take the bread and the wine and there's a peace that comes upon me that I can't explain. That moment walking away from the priest and the bread is in my mouth, the wine is still tasting on my tongue. I know that it's real. And that no matter what is happening around me, no matter what's going on, I know that in eating his body and drinking his blood, it's okay because he's with us and because I have eternal life with God. God bless you on this celebration. I know you've probably got something planned, some kind of meal is planned, I'm sure, with singing and dancing and, and just enjoy Enjoy the fact that God loves you and God's forgiven you. And then pray for me. I hope I can get back to uh, Mendenau and to Davao and, and uh, Calibo and um, Manila and, and uh, Sao Paulo City and all the places that I can just picture in my head to be with you and celebrate the great gift that God has given us in our bishops. Amen.